you just bought your first pre-built gaming PC, or potentially you just won one, which is what you can do with this CyberPower PC. It has an RTX 2060 and an i5-11400F. You can check the link in the description below in order to get entered for that giveaway. So yeah, you just bought your first pre-built or potentially you upgraded to a new one and it just showed up at your door and you knew the specs going in weren't going to be that great. But you decide, you know, let's jump onto this thing. Let's play some games and see how it performs. And it does pretty good, which is exactly what we got out of the CyberPower PC. But you know there's some room for improvement. And the first two areas that you're going to want to upgrade on any pre-built, especially in the low to mid-tier range, is going to be your CPU cooling and your RAM. So on the majority of pre-built PCs around like that thousand dollar mark, even a little bit above, they're mainly going to come with a single DIMM of eight gigabytes of memory for the most part. So you're going to be running your system in single channel memory, which is going to leave you uh, lacking a little bit of performance, which we will hopefully see today with a quick RAM upgrade. So I went ahead and bought some Corsair Vengeance uh, DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM DIMMs. So these two sticks are going to replace our one stick that's currently in the machine and we should see a lot of improvement. Now, if you're able to find a single stick of memory, maybe even used, that matches your specifications of the existing uh, RAM that is in the computer that came with the pre-built, you can definitely do that. Uh, it should save you a little bit of money, but this only costs right around 65 bucks um, for two sticks. So the cheapest I could find for one stick was right around 40 made more sense to just go for a matching pair of the same memory. And then of course, cooling is going to be a big thing as well. And that's where we're going with the Cooler Master Hyper 212, simple, reliable cooler, $35 cooler, uh, but it's definitely going to outperform the stock Intel cooler that came with our i5-11400F. So yeah, these are going to be the first two upgrades for the most part that you're gonna wanna make on any pre-built. Let's jump into it and get these two upgrades installed. Let's first upgrade the RAM. All we're gonna do is pop out our one single DIMM of ballistics memory, super simple. And this is actually 3000 megahertz CL16 memory from ballistics. And we're going to replace it with our Corsair Vengeance 3200 megahertz. So all we're gonna do is line it up with the two gray DIMM slots that are on the motherboard. We are of course just going to line up with the little nibbon that is inside of the RAM slot, push down on both sides, and then you'll hear a click. And there we go. We have now upgraded to 16 gigs of memory, which should do a lot for us, especially upgrading to dual channel when it comes to both gaming and just regular everyday CPU and overall PC performance on this system. So now we're gonna upgrade the cooler on our CPU, and this is really gonna help out with temps. We were seeing temps over 80 degrees, nearing 90 degrees on this Intel stock cooler. So let's swap it out for the Hyper 212. We got the back plate all set up. Pretty simple installation. So the back plate is in. Now we just need to be able to make sure that it stays in place while we do the install. So my plan is to use the Cooler Master box that came with the cooler, just stick it right behind our motherboard tray and Hope that that will then keep the back plate in place when we go to install our cooler with our standoffs that are now sticking through. So next step was getting the actual standoffs uh, for the CPU cooler connected to those screws coming out through the back plate, cleaned off the old thermal paste, 
installed some new stuff that actually came with the cooler. So it's a Cooler Master thermal paste. Uh, should be plenty good for this uh, 11400F. Now we're going to get the Hyper 212 ready to go and screw that down in. So we're just going to follow uh, a crisscrossing pattern, kind of like an X pattern as we're tightening uh, the Hyper 212 down. Just jump in between screws so that we can get even mounting pressure on the CPU with the cooler. And final step is, of course, getting the uh, 120 millimeter fan reconnected to uh, the CPU cooler. This is a little bit finicky. Um, and it took me a little bit uh, just to figure out the best way to get this thing installed, as you can see. Um, but once you get it figured out and you get those mounting brackets connected, just slots right on to the CPU cooler. No screws necessary. Um, and they do give you an additional set so that you can install a second fan on the back side of this cooler as well. Hook up the fan connector and we're good to go. So now it's time for our first startup after all of the upgrades. Everything powers on perfectly right away. CPU fan spinning, so we're good there. Now it does take a little while to boot up um, and show the splash screen, but it does eventually show up. Just kind of relearning the new configuration with the memory. Uh, but once it does that, everything boots right up. We see the gigabyte splash screen and eventually we will see the Windows 11 home screen as well. Uh, but now that we're booted up, it's time to do some testing. So first we're gonna jump into Cinebench and then we will jump into some games in order to make sure we're getting some improved FPS numbers along the way. So here we are, we're in Cinebench, and as you can see, we're running pretty smooth, very similar scores to last time, except last time we were seeing temps right around 92 degrees C at the peak after going through some different renders, uh, and now, as you guys can see, we're peaking right around 67, 68 degrees C, which is perfect. And now we're jumping into some games. First off with Valorant, same exact settings as last time, pretty much all medium settings. Uh, but this time we will see much different uh, when it comes to FPS. Uh, so last time we were averaging right around 180, 190 FPS, jumping between 175 and 200 FPS throughout the gaming session. And this time we're not dropping below 200 FPS and we're sitting much closer to an average of right around 220 which is an awesome improvement of almost 40 fps on average in this game so close to a you know 20 percent jump which is not bad at all for upgrading a cooler and spending some money on some new ram Down A. And now we're switching over to Enemy Halo, and this game is much more GPU intensive than Valorant. Games like Valorant, CSGO, much more CPU heavy, which is why we're seeing such big jumps in, uh, in, in FPS uh, when it comes to those games. Uh, but when it comes to a game like Halo, we're not seeing as big of a jump in terms of FPS. We're going from right around 70 FPS with the old setup to now right around 75 FPS on average. But that is quite substantial improvement when the game is using 99% of our GPU pretty much all the time. So definitely not a CPU intensive. We were hitting 99% on the GPU before we did any upgrades and we're hitting that after. So in you know, this situation, we're very much dependent on our RTX 2060, not so much on the system memory and our CPU performance. We have the ball. We have the ball. Plasma grenades acquired. Ball dropped. We have the ball. Nearing victory. 
victory. Ball dropped. There we have it with two super simple upgrades just swapping out the cooler and installing two new ram sticks we saw a lot of performance improvements we were able to keep the cpu right around 25 degrees cooler under load huge improvements there dropping from right around 92 degrees c to right between like 68 c and 69 degrees c which is an amazing improvement for just swapping out from an intel stock cooler to a hyper 212 could always get some better cooling performance if you did want to upgrade to a better cooler and in combination with the cpu cooler improvements and just overall cooling of our cpu installing the extra 16 gigabytes of memory definitely helped us in game so now with 16 gigabytes running in dual channel we were seeing right around 225 fps on average in valorant which was pretty much like a 40 fps improvement on average, so we really never drop it below 200 FPS in that game. Much more of a CPU dependent game uh, than GPU heavy, which is why we saw such a big jump in performance. And then in a game like Halo Infinite, still the same settings, we jumped right around five FPS, going from 70 to 75 FPS. With our GPU maxed out, there wasn't too much performance improvements we were going to see from the extra RAM and the slightly higher boosts on our CPU. So overall for a hundred bucks, really, really good performance improvements. And of course, whoever wins the giveaway is going to get the upgrades along with the CyberPower PC. So you get a lot better performance on this PC out of the box for whoever wins our giveaway. It ends on December 24th on Christmas Eve. So make sure you get entered using the link in the description below before then. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel, turn on post notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one.